You're watching The Wellness Hour Live. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, long-lasting facial fillers. Are they a good idea to put something in your face that is permanent? With us, we have an expert on the topic, board certified plastic surgeon. He's a regular on our show, Dr. Neil Handel. Welcome to the program. Hi, good to see you again. Okay, so when I said uh, these non-surgical procedures and long-lasting right. fillers, right. and this is a big topic. It's a huge topic because in the last five to 10 years, there's been tremendous growth in so-called non-invasive procedures for rejuvenating the appearance of the face. Okay. You know, instead of having your eyelids done, instead of getting a facelift or a neck lift, women are coming to the office, and as an office procedure, women and men having things like Botox, Restylane, Radius, Juvederm, uh, these kinds of uh, filler materials, and they are very effective. And a as we've used them over the years, the products have become better and better. Surgeons are better and better in their techniques. Uh, and, the and the manufacturers have come up with longer lasting products. Okay, and like what's a long lasting product? Well, the, you know, the, and the, how long is it? The, the, the original thing that got all of this started, and a lot of people aren't even gonna remember this, is collagen. Collagen injections were popular about 25 years ago. The problem with them was that they only lasted for a couple of months. Then other products, uh, things like Restylane came out, and then Juvederm, and then Juvederm Extra Long Lasting, and then Radius, and then Sculptra, and with each permutation, the products lasted longer and longer and longer. Um, so now we have products that we can inject to, let's say, fill the, the nasolabia fold here, or to fill a, this deep crease that we call the marionette line, uh, or to fill in areas of the face that may have depressions, like the temporal area. Okay. Uh, and they can last up to two years. So it, it's, you know, they work well. We use them in the lips. A lot of patients, uh, as they get older, notice that the lip isn't as full, isn't as plump, isn't as sensual looking. They're great for the lips. Uh, they're great for even the lower eyelid area if they're used very judiciously and carefully by experienced surgeons. So these products have become extremely popular. They're cost effective, they're safe, and they're much longer lasting but than they used to be. But there is an art to it. Absolutely. And, and the reason I say that is because I feel like I could spot fillers 10 yards away and sometimes 20 yards away. They're, because absence of wrinkles is not youth. Well, all the time. I, I, I think what you can spot is Because I hear the argument, okay, well, when you're 18 <laughs> years old, you have a big round face, but, the, but not everybody does. No. And I think they're I, building I, them out too far. Well, I th I, I, certainly, in, there's no doubt that in the area of the lips, some patients and their doctors have just gone overboard. But even the face here. Well. It's uh, being uh, overdone it, sometimes. I, it is. And sometimes it's with fillers and sometimes it's with facial implants. Sometimes women and men have cheek implants that just don't look natural. It gives them that kind of cat-like face. But I think when things are done judiciously, when they're done in a proper way with, with the correct aesthetic goal in mind, the results can be and should be undetectable. I mean, the, the But do you see it? I just said that I see it. Do you of see course I overfilling all the time? Not, uh, occasionally I see it, yes. Not in my patients. Do you ever go to Newport Beach? I've heard of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, you I'm know, sure. You yeah. know, my joke, our joke, and I shouldn't say this about Newport Beach, but our joke is when plastic surgeons around the country come on my show, I had a guy one time that said, you know, Randy, a bad facelift or bad plastic surgery or overfilling is expensive because you got to move to Newport Beach so you fit in, <laughs> so you look like everybody else. Well, that's a great line. Look, any plastic surgery that's immediately recognizable to somebody as a, an operation, as a nose job, an eyelid job, a face job, a boob job, that's not good plastic surgery in my opinion. You want the result to look natural. Whose fault is that? The patient demanding <clears throat> on, the, on, the, on the doctor saying, I you know, want all this filled in. Believe it or not, I think it's more often the patient's fault than the doctor's fault. We all want to please our patients. Women come in and go, can you put in a little more in my lips? We go, you know, your lips look beautiful. They're normal, they're natural looking. No, no, I want them a little fuller, a little fuller. You know, it could be the same with breast implants. You have beautiful breasts. I know, but they're not big enough. My girlfriend's I disagree though. I mean, you know, respectfully. Part, part of it is the patient. Sometimes it's yeah, the but doctor's I feel like, judgment. Do you want to let the patient make a mistake? No. That makes them look odd. No, you can't. But I'm saying that some of this is patient driven. I didn't say that it should be or that in my practice, we allow that. Have we you don't. ever turned anybody away and say, Absolutely. I won't go any bigger? Absolutely. Oh, really? Okay. Absolutely. Not only that, I've turned away filler patients saying, you don't need, you know, they come in and they look good. And they go, well, I want some more Juvederm in here. I go, you know, why don't we wait six months, come back. Um, same with um, uh, uh, the lips. You know, a lot of young women just get into the habit of doing it over and over and over. And they're maybe in competition with their, their girlfriends. And they overdo it. Nobody, so. li by, by the way, I can speak for men. We don't like those big lips. The phony lips. Not the phony lips, but uh, full, I mean, full, full lips, full are, lips one thing, are sensual. But the overdone. And, no, I understand that. But if you look at photographs of models and, and younger women and girls and children, they always have full, full lips are associated with youth. If you look at the lips of you know senile patients, 
70s, 80s, 90s, they always have thin lips. So clearly, changes in the lip are part of, age, of, of, of facial aging uh, and okay. can be corrected with these techniques. Um, so I, I do think there's a valuable role for them, but as you've pointed out, it has to be done judiciously, it has to be done by somebody who's experienced, and it has to be done with an eye to the correct aesthetic goal. Okay, and you have before. to look at their before and afters for that. Absolutely, absolutely. And get some idea what the patient's seeking to achieve to make sure it's realistic. And it's not gonna look abnormal. Do you believe, I mean, you have a bit of a bias that if you're gonna get fillers done, mm -hmm. go to a plastic, a facial plastic surgeon or a plastic surgeon that does both. Both the surgical yeah, procedures do, and I, fillers, I, because yeah, there's yeah. a lot of medical spas that all they do yeah, is fillers. Yeah, yeah. That, well, and they're being right. told, by the way, because I'm even being told, Randy, you can avoid a facelift. All you need is fillers. Yeah. Well, not with uh, me personally. I'm just saying. No, that. I understand your point, and, and that's an excellent point. It, it, you know, it's it's, it's uh, like the old uh, saying about you know the guy. You go to the guy that's only got a hammer, then the whole world is a nail to him. If he's only got one tool to use, he's going to use it on every job. But there's some people that may be afraid to go to you because you're thinking surgery. Well, we 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 assess what the patient's needs are, and we always give them a whole host of options because not everybody wants surgery. Not everybody okay. can afford surgery. People are afraid of surgery. You know, we're not. We, we're there to, to try to help them achieve their goals in a way that's the most palatable to them from, the stand, from every standpoint, including the okay. economic standpoint. Okay, good. Yeah. I want to thank you for coming so to the show. So there's a lot more options now. Always a pleasure to have you on thank the show. Thank you so much. Enjoyed right. being here. Thank You're you. You're watching the Wellness Hour live. I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll be right back.